to the, uh, to the House. Nō reira, e mihi atu kia koutou katou. Andrew Little. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. I take pleasure in speaking on the new Plymouth District Council Waitara Lands Bill and I acknowledge the work of all those who have brought the bill to this stage. The new Plymouth District Council, uh, its current Mayor Neil Holdham, its, um, uh, his predecessor Andrew Judd and also uh, the former Chief Executive of that District Council, Barbara McKero, who worked hard with Te Atiawa to get an agreement that has led to uh, this legislation, to the Taranaki Regional Council that has the immediate legal stake in these lands, to the Hapu, Manukurihi and Otarawa, uh, to, and of course to the MP for New Plymouth, Jonathan Young, who has shepherded this uh, bill into the House and uh, also assisted with it going through the Māori Affairs Select Committee. And I'll come to the work of the Select Committee shortly Mr Speaker, the course of events that has led this bill to come here and the issues which underpin it um, have their own interesting path. Um, Mr Korako talked about the origins in terms of the land confiscations in, 1860, in the 1860s that are these lands and have been those endowment lands and leasehold land to the occupiers uh, of it since then. Those confiscations followed the land wars, about which um, I guess we could, we're all really starting to learn the true historical significance. But the issue of these lands and the present occupants of them, the residents of them, has been a festering sore in that town for a long time. Waitara, a small but very proud town just north of New Plymouth, a working town, it serves the local farming district, it once upon a time had as its principal employer a massive meatworks, Borthwicks, um, which is gone now, there is a meatworks there but it's a very fine, um, uh, fine producer of very fine goods and there are a number of other industries that sustain Waitara right now. But still there are residents and occupants of the land there who are paying ground leases under, under Glasgow leases, which come up for renewal every 21 years. And every 21 years, there is a massive hike in the ground rents, and, it, and the whole argument gets underway again, um, which is not to take away from the significance of the local hapu and iwi who have been seeking their treaty settlement, uh, of which these lands were originally uh, to be considered a part of. And so in the last 20 or 30 years, there have been two sort of trains of, of, of activity happening side by side. One is the Te Atiawa and other Taranaki Iwi pursuing their treaty claims and finally getting their negotiations underway. And the, others, the other are the current occupants of the land, of the, res, of the dwellings that occupy that land, trying to get what they perceived as their right to purchase the freehold. And that was a question that went to the court, went to the highest court of the land at the time, um, based on what those residents thought was a promise made to them that they could get to own their little plot of land. But they were defeated. And as a consequence of the treaty negotiations for Te Atiawa and some very progressive thinking by the community, by the community leaders, and also Te Atiawa at uh, the relevant point, electing not to take up the land as part of their treaty settlement, these arrangements have come to Parliament for its consideration. And that is a good thing and it has been a good step. The, I think it also to be acknowledged that the way the land has been administered, the proceeds from the ground rents on the land have only been allowed to be used for very limited purposes currently now under the, uh, the stewardship of the Taranaki Regional Council, but it relates to maintenance of the, um, uh, the sea end of the river and the port and the, the harbour that, uh, that sits around there. And through the, uh, the efforts and the energy of those who have now taken up this issue, respected the concerns of the hapu, respected the concerns of the, the settlers who are currently on that land, 
have come up with a solution that allows the hapu to achieve a benefit and some control about the long-term uh, stewardship of the land, as well as those who have been seeking to purchase the freehold rights of the land which they occupy, a, a, a happy conclusion is close to being reached. I want to acknowledge the work of the Select Committee, in particular the Chair, uh, Mr Kodako, who has now spoken, um, and for the close scrutiny they have given to the original bill, um, and for allowing a set of discussions and negotiations to open up to ensure that the ultimate deal that this House will uh, give its final blessing to in the third reading is one that every party can live with, that every party benefits from. Um, and that is, I have to say, in relation to Taranaki settlements, has been one of the virtues in the last few years of the, uh, this government's approach where flexibility has been allowed for those deeply emotionally felt historical issues have been dealt with in a respectful way uh, and led to a re resolution of those issues outside of conventional treaty settlements. And uh, I see the Minister for Treaty Negotiations is in the House and he deserves a lot of credit for the approach that he has taken that I know in Taranaki has made a significant difference. Um, to, to Māori in that community, but to Pākehā as well. Because in the end, when Māori are unsettled and dispirited about the inability to achieve a resolution to their historical grievances, it means the entire community faces the same disquiet. And that we are now in a process of uh, settling long-standing festering issues, I think, is a credit to all those involved. The approach that has been taken under this bill alone of allowing further discussion, further negotiation and a settlement that meets the needs of all interested parties is really giving life to the treaty. And I think that is to be um, uh, noted and credit to be given where it is due. The changes that um, have been suggested by the Select Committee uh, many, and I think that is a, and that's a good sign. The committee has been fully engaged. They've listened to those who've come to speak to them, and they've been willing to show that change, which uh, in this great parliament of ours is nothing more than we would expect. And so um, giving a place for the hapu, for Manukorihi and Otaraua hapu, giving them a role in the governance, giving them a role in the say of the proceeds that can be generated through the sale of um, uh, the leasehold to freehold owners or the ongoing rents that will be collected from the land, that is a positive step. Um, defining the Waitara River and vesting the Waitara River, not in Te Atiawa, but in a separate legal entity that will look after or provide the stewardship of that river from its uh, origins to where it spews out into the beautiful Taranaki west coast um, uh, will, I think, ensure that the, the voice of all relevant parties in managing that river, getting it clean again, bringing life back to it, um, uh, is a great achievement. Ensuring a good and fair distribution of the funds to be used for a variety of purposes beyond what you know, the Taranaki Regional Council is limited to doing right now is a positive step as well. And the committee is to be uh, congratulated for ensuring that those concerns have been heard and the ability to do stuff for that community um, is now to be, uh, to be put in place. Um, for the role or for the New Plymouth District Council and the role that it has played in making other land, reserve land available to be picked up by uh, the hapu from the proceeds that are generated from the sale of um, the leasehold lands, um, that I think also is in the spirit of the treaty settlements and the restoration of land and mana whenua to local hapu uh, and is to be welcomed as well. Mr Speaker, like all of these things, like all of the settling these long-standing grievances, uh, in the end it is about restoring justice, giving fairness uh, and, and 
giving peace back to communities again, to the Tangata Whenua, to um, uh, Pākehā settlers there as well. This bill has the ability to do that, subject to what happens in the Committee of the Whole House, and uh, I support the bill. The Honourable Christopher Finlayson. I want to take a brief call following on from that 